Welcome to another TCGU video brought to you by The Chariot Group. My name is Bob Jackman and today we're going to be talking about the Shout It Out activity in the Lesson Activity Builder. This is the first activity in the Lesson Activity Builder that is mobile enabled, which means students will use a device to interact with the activity. Students use a web browser on their mobile devices, laptops, or desktop computers to connect to an activity and contribute words or images. Let's build a Shout It Out activity together. First thing I like to do is start with the plan. So we are going to create two activities together. The first will be for students to share fun things they did over the summer. The second will be a categorized activity where students will take pictures of different shapes. Now that we have our plan, we will add a new page and we will begin creating the activity by clicking on the Lesson Activity Builder on the toolbar. That is a button that looks like a magic hat. Then we will scroll down until we find Shout It Out and then click Add This Activity. Here we will choose either to have the students' messages arranged randomly or categorized. For the first activity, we are going to do randomly. Then we will choose our theme, poster board. Then click Next. In this section, we will choose the contribution type. We can choose text or images. In this case, we will choose text. We can also choose to limit the number of contributions per device and whether or not to display the students' names by default. Then we click Next. This next page allows us to add any gamification. We won't be adding that at this time. We will then click Finish. We can leave it like this, or we can move the activity down slightly and add some text at the top for a prompt. Let's create our second activity. So we will create a new page, and then click on Lesson Activity Builder, find Shout It Out, then click Add This Activity. This time we will choose Categorized, and then click Next. Here we will add our categories, which will be circle, triangle, and rectangle. We will then change the contribution type to images, and then change the maximum contributions per device to three, then click Next. We aren't going to add any game components, so we will then click Finish. If we need to go back to editing, we can click the pencil on the top right, or to reset the activity, we can also click this Reset icon. Now we will deliver these in class. On the first activity on the right side is the control panel for the Shout It Out activity. Click on Start Activity. The first time this is done, you will need to prove that you are not a robot by answering a question. This will only need to be done once. Once the activity is started, at the top it will tell the students the web address to go to, classlab.com, and the activity number. Students will open a browser, go to classlab.com, and then type in the activity number as well as their name and click Join the Activity. Once the students have connected, their name will show up in the student list on the activity control panel. Each student will be assigned a pin that will be used to pin their contributions to the board. Their student can then type in their response and then click send response. Once they do this, their contribution will appear on the board with their pin in it. If the student has responses left, they can continue to send more responses. When they have run out of responses, this message will tell them to wait until the next activity is started. If you have students sharing devices, this icon with the arrow at the top right will log the student out so another can log in with the same device. The activity control panel appears on the right of the activity. This has a lot of information and controls in it, so let's go through these so you understand what they all do. At the top is a web address and the activity ID. This tells the students where to go on their device and the activity ID to be able to join the activity. Below that is the control to turn off showing the first three letters of their name on their pin. Next, it shows how many contributions each student can contribute. This number was set as we created the activity. It can be changed by clicking Pause Contributions and then updating the number. While the activity is paused, students will get a message on their device that the activity is paused and to turn their attention to the front. All of the contributions can be moved around. This allows the teacher to be able to group or sort the contributions. Any of the contributions can be deleted by dragging it to the trash can in the top left-hand corner. The first time you drag a contribution to the trash, it will ask you to confirm the delete. You need to only do this once per session. If you don't want the trash can to appear, either, you, either to have more space or so you don't accidentally delete something, you can choose not to display the trash can in the activity control panel. On the bottom of the activity control panel is the student list. This will show every student's name, their PIN, and how many messages they have contributed. Students with a red device next to their name means they are no longer connected to the activity, either because they logged out, closed the activity, or their device got turned off. On the right, it will tell you the number of contributions by that student. 
On the very bottom, it will tell you the number of connected devices out of the total number of devices that have been connected during the activity, as well as the total number of contributions. The control panel can take up a bit of space and can be hidden either by clicking the X in the top right hand corner or by clicking the activity icon on the far right. The activity icon shows up green to mean the activity is active, yellow while the activity is paused, and red when the activity is stopped. The number in the middle icon indicates how many currently connected devices there are. To end the activity, click end. The students will receive a message indicating the activity has been ended and telling them to wait for the next activity to start. When the activity is ended, all the contributions are still on the page and can continue to be moved around. If you choose to restart the activity, that will delete all the contributions and start over. Let's move to our second activity. Since the students have already signed in, they don't need to sign in again. So I can just click Start Activity and then close the control panel to get it out of the way. In this activity, students are going to send images. When they click Select an Image, they can select an image to send. On some devices, it may ask them if they want to take a picture to send. Also, since we chose to have categories for this activity, the student will have to choose what activity to send their contribution to. Then they can click Send and their picture will appear on the board. The contribution will appear in the category they selected. The teacher can move the contributions around but cannot change the category. Clicking an image will allow it to be viewed larger, and clicking the arrows underneath the image will cycle through the images like a slideshow. Clicking outside the image or on the X will get rid of this slideshow view. Students really enjoy using a device to contribute to a lesson. It also allows some students to contribute that generally may be too shy to do so. Also, you can start an activity on one page, say for comments or questions, and then leave that page to teach part of your lesson. Meanwhile, students can type in questions or comments on that activity page for when you come back to it. This concludes our video on how to build a shouted out activity with the Lesson Activity Builder in Smart Notebook. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with others, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.